Hello, everyone. We're going to do a consolidated week 10 and week 11 video lecture so you can get coverage, spend more time on your project uh, for next week and all that. So let's kind of review here. Um, OK, we're talking about employee retention in week 10. And there's a few areas I want to highlight here when it comes to turnover. One of them being that there's a certain degree of natural turnover that happens. People move onward, move forward relocate, find new career aspirations, get promotions elsewhere. That's part of life, and that's okay. And I, I'd rather someone do that than to be complacent anywhere. So, But if you see a substantial degree of turnover in a certain department or unit, what typically happens if HR leadership is flagging this, and they do typically, is they're wondering what's going on with this organization right now or this unit or whatever that we're getting such high turnover, let's investigate this a little bit more. So it may include looking at exit interviews, conducting exit interviews beforehand. It could be interviewing or discussing what's going on with the current employees and the manager. And uh, typically from there, they can get a better idea or indicator of what's going on. So I will give you an example. Um, when I worked for Delaware government, the Office of Management and Budget came down pretty hard on one of our um, programs. It was actually a dietary unit. And he had a director of dietary who was saying the managers aren't effective. I'm going to put them through training. And I talked to the managers. They seemed like they were fine. Um, after extensive interviews, they went through training. And that meant training didn't work. Now, something else is going on here. And it turned out to be the manager, her himself, in this case. And I wrote a report as such, and they had to make some adjustments to who was overseeing the program. And the truth was, it, a lot of it had to do with a lack of leadership, the lousy management, then do said high turnover, in addition to a very, very, very profoundly low wage for that job. Typically, there, there are some individuals that work in those low pay, what they call pay grade one or two jobs, because um, they're there more for the benefits than they are anything else. Like, so for example, in Southern Delaware, it's not uncommon for families to run farms, chickens and, uh, uh, you know, agriculture crops and all that. I know it's very, very common in central Pennsylvania, uh, but, you know, this is a Southern part of Delaware. I'm from Northern. I don't know much about that stuff. So, uh, you know, you'd have someone coming to work to, you know, to work there. They didn't really care about the money as much as they did the benefits, cover their family, medical and the like. They're happy. They'll do their job. They'll leave. It's more transactional. And that's OK. But for the lot of people, they want to develop and move up. And I don't blame them because that's just from the very beginning, even in supervisory fashion. So we're seeing turnover managers, too. It was largely because of the way they were being treated and what I would call lousy leadership or lousy management. And this strikes a chord where decisions need to be made about what we're going to do with the manager. Are they on a performance improvement plan? Can we let them go? Can we encourage them to retire? Can we transfer them? Or can we have someone oversee and take the power away from them and see what we can do to develop them and what they need to do? So, there's, there's different reasons why employees leave their jobs. The other issue, too, is that they would get their ServSafe certification and then take it to the Marriott, which pays them much more. So I don't blame them. That makes sense. So there's a lot of cost of unnecessary, unhealthy turnover. What happens is uh, basically you're spending a lot of money on recruitment and selection again. And after a while, it becomes very expensive. So... You know, basically, the important part here is that we have to be on watch as to why there's a high turnover rate. And it could just be natural. Individuals have found other jobs. We're not paying enough. Uh, we're not as competitive for some reason with benefits. Or typically can get into issues regarding leadership, and that could be a problem, too. So um, managing downsizing, that's a tough one. Uh, not my favorite thing in the world, but sometimes positions need to be eliminated because they're no longer necessary or, and or to 
reduce budget and payroll and all that. But after we downsize, those who are left behind might still fill the pinch of it. Meaning, am I next? What else is something else doesn't work out? So they also might be looking to vote with their feet and moving on as well. And that's completely natural and normal. There are those who will stick to it and those will say, oh, yeah, I'll hang in. But if this ship's going to sink, you know, I got to go. So it just really depends. The important part as a leader after downsizing and layoffs and all that is to really check the polls of your colleagues, still be the motivating and inspirational person you are. Um, be open to discussions. You know, if they want to vent, that's fine. But the idea is after a while, after that shock, we still need to push forward. And it can be difficult at times because in the back of our head, we're thinking, oh, well, this could happen to me soon. What do I do? Completely normal. It's called the fight or flight response. So if you remain disciplined, calm, and supportive as a leader, you're more likely than not to get that calm from those who are left after something like that. So legal issues is separating employees. If you end a position, they're eligible for unemployment because the position was ended. It wasn't because necessarily of performance. So there are times though where someone's performance is questionable and they're going through the process and they're the persons to get laid off. They are technically, their position has ended. They have not been fired. There's a difference, a big difference between the two. So we have to be mindful of that, that they're eligible for unemployment, whatever the state laws dictated to be. So um, that's about it for week 10. Now, week 11, you'll notice that there's an assessed question. This is just to summarize what you've learned throughout the course, the takeaways you've gained. It's three points. You do not have to go ahead and respond to peers, but you're more than welcome to do so. And the idea here is just kind of get a sense. I'll get a sense of what you've gained from this course so I know what's working well, what needs some adjustments here and there. This is newly designed, so I have to go back and look and say, oh, this is great here. Could do better here and the like. But I'd like to know what kind of takeaways you gained from this course. So I can be further helpful and understand that I'm you know, doing what I can to support you. So, um, yeah, other than that, please work on your presentations. I'm around. If you need any help, support, assistance, PowerPoint, presenting videos, you know, video mediums to go ahead and do that. Just let me know and I'll be glad to help you. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Have a great break.